All right, what up, guys? So let's go ahead here. Happy Sunday, fun day. So let's go ahead. Um, We are buying the US dollar index. US dollar index has climbed itself back up to 112.7, close to 113. That would be the first target to break through. And then target 114. And then the high, the peak of the highest price is 114.8. So that's what I'd be looking at for, uh, for this week. Now, remember, tomorrow is a U.S. Bank federal holiday, which is Columbus Day. So don't get too caught up and get too excited on trading way too much for either tonight or tomorrow morning. So it is a U.S. Bank federal holiday. Post office is closed. You know, the banks are closed. Uh, can you still go shopping? You still can. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. But anyways, I'm not something that I would be recommending for trading. So it is Columbus Day tomorrow. Just remind, be mindful of that. So uh, this the plan for this week is to keep buying the U.S. dollar index. Positive news on Friday for the non-farm payroll. Uh, U.S. 30. Um, I apologize, guys. Don't get too caught up on what I have here on my chart. I'm just outlining from the highs and lows on what happened from last year until now. And then I have like a crazy trend line all the way back from 2009 and all the way to um, up here hitting up to 21,000. So don't get too caught up on these horizontal lines, guys. Uh, we are at 28,729 right around here. Um, where is it? My here. Looking for it to come down to 28,000 and then down to 27,000. What's going to be very interesting to see is there was a lot of consolidation at this price zone at 27,000 and 28,000. So we'll see what happens from here. And um, there, um now this is US 30 on the weekly chart. This is what happened during the pandemic, right? This is 2020, this is April, right? The beginning of, of January, 2020, right? It peaked at a high of, of, of 29,000 and it shot all the way down to this wick here. Um, Whoops. I apologize, at 18,000. So that's a 9,000 point drop, which is crazy, right? Um, I'm expecting another key move for a really bearish move for all the indices, you know, Wall Street, S&P 500 to come down. I'm uh, looking for S&P to come down at 3,500 to 3,000. Uh, overall, the, the lowest price that it's come down out you know, two years ago for the pandemic was 2100. So it's a pretty substantial move. And like I said, uh, looking for all the indices to come down long term. NAS, NAS 100, which is NASDAQ, looking to sell NASDAQ back down to 10,000 to 9,000. And so um, this is pretty crazy to see where things are headed for the markets right now. Overall, the only thing that's really standing tall and standing high is the U.S. dollar index. Gold, um, I believe we are selling gold. Hang on. I believe. Whoops. Come on. Where's that? Yes. We are selling gold and we're buying all the U.S. dollar pairs. So selling gold back down 1680, 1660, 1640. Uh, off the wick here, off the weekly. Uh, whoop, that's on my eye here. Off the weekly here at sixteen sixteen. That would be like the fourth take profit. You really don't go all the way down to sixteen hundred. And so, um, overall, if you were to draw a trend line going down, you know, from here, let's do this. A trend line from this wick, and you highlight all the way down. It it has respected the weekly trend line. I, that's why I like weekly trend lines. I used to use it a lot, not anymore. But overall, it's been, you know, going back down. Even though it's gone back up, you know, the, this past week before non-farm payroll, you know, my intentions were to sell gold and buy U.S. dollar. So, and like I said, and overall, U.S. dollar has not given up any any of its gains. Okay, just remember that. U.S. dollar has not given up any of its gains. I even talked about what to expect if we were to come into the recession. Everything is being traded in U.S. dollars and globally, right? Um, currency trading is for dummies. Book talks about it. 
more than 70% of the US dollar currency is being traded around global currency markets. That's huge. Set more than 70%, if not more than that now. So that's a huge um, incoming wave here. And that's the rise. And also exporters, exporters, right? China, Japan, Australia, Canada, what else? I mean, there's New Zealand is taking a hit. I mean, there's a lot of things going on. So I don't want to get too caught up in the uh, recession talk here because uh, it's it, it's going to be an ongoing debate. But uh, but that's what we're doing for gold. We're selling gold back down. I would be looking for 1680, 1670, 1660, 1650, 1640. And then we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, I would highlight this a little bit closer. But yeah, we'll see where gold goes. But overall, we're selling gold. Buying UJ. UJ is still going up. Looking for 146 to 147 and 148. So uh, breaking down simple math terms on, you know, taking profit at every every 100, 100 pips. So easy way of doing math here for every 100 pips it reaches. All right, 146, 140, uh, 147, and 148. It is still going. So being in Japan has taken a toll. The automobile industry has taken a toll. Obviously, Japan's main, main export is uh, the automobile industry, you know. They were all the cars that are being supposed to be shipped. Uh, so new cars, I don't know about the new cars. I would not recommend buying a new car at this point. Car prices have plummeted. The value of cars have plummeted. So don't get too caught up on that. All right, let's go into here. The pound going down. Pound going down. So looking for selling the pound. We're selling the pound back down to 110 to 108 and 106. Um, It is... Uh, Overall, this was the only pair that did the biggest move of the week and the biggest retracement of the week. So this was this was a really good pair to hold on to until Friday. So it came all the way up to one, yeah, above 114, which is pretty crazy. I mean, last week was pretty crazy too. 103 to 112. That was another crazy move. So uh looking to sell it back down to 110, 110. 108, 106, and back down to where it started, 103, under 104. Euro British pound trying to come back up, trying to find support at around what else is this week here? 86. Um, it's at it closed at 87.755 here on trading view. Looking to buy, and we are buying, looking for 88 to 88.5, 89, and then maybe a possible move all the way back up to 92. Um and that's where it fell off anyways. There's a lot of it. I mean, there's a lot of structure within from 93 and all the way down to 86. So that's like 5,000 pit range right there. So, but there's a lot of structure within this, within this price zone. So, um, don't get too caught up. It is at eight. It is closing in at eighty-seven under eighty-eight. We are buying this pair. We'll see what happens to this pair this week. Euro going down. We can just keep selling euro night back down ninety-seven to ninety-six and ninety-five. Uh, maybe a possible move down to ninety-four and ninety-three. I mean, this is still respecting the down, uh, the downtrend of the trend line. If you were to draw a trend line weekly, which, like I said. I would go off of this point right here, 114, and draw it down. It is still respecting the downtrend, and it's been bouncing off the weekly trend line. Uh, like I said, I don't, I'm not drawing it, but like I said, I like using the weekly trend lines because it's a little bit more easier to work with for those of you that are swing traders and like to swing long term. And this has been a key mo a component of selling this pair along with selling the pound. I mean, a lot, a lot of pairs are losing a lot of, a, a lot of currencies are losing the value of, of their own currency against the U.S. dollar. Okay. It's been all, it's been like this since, since last year. That's the easy way I can say it. Um, U Swiss, buying U Swiss, looking forward to break a dollar here and then come all the way up to 101 and 102. We'll see where it goes from there. Massive bullish move for the U.S. dollar Swiss franc that has rallied back up on Friday during NFP, during non-farm payroll. 
USD CAD going back up, looking for USD CAD to go back to 139. We are buying this pair, 139 to 140, 141. I don't think this pair is going to drop anytime soon. I'm talking like a major drop, like drop all the way back down to where it came from, 120. Looking for probably long term for this pair to retest 144, all the way back to the wick of 146 and 147. And this was this. US dollar, Canadian dollar, the USD CAD here, peaked this high right when the pandemic hit in March of 2020. And I have it highlighted here because on the bottom of this, of this, um, these crosshairs, you look down on the chart, it says Monday 16, March 20th. So pretty substantial here, guys. Australia and New Zealand looking to keep selling these pairs. Looking for Australia to come down to 62 to 61 to 60. And New Zealand has broken the support back down again. Looking for New Zealand is the weakest pair, weakest currency of all times. Okay. A following, you know, behind that would be Australia. So looking to uh, keep selling New Zealand back down to break a new low of 55 to 54 and maybe possible 53. So, uh, let's see here. A lot of holidays. Uh, Canada's got Thanksgiving Day. I don't know what the I don't know what the Independence of Guaya Guaya Quail. Um, Japanese has Health and Sports Day, Columbus Day. Um, let's see what we got going on here. I don't. That would not count that much on Monday. Hold on. Ooh. We have the FOMC minutes. All right. So Wednesday is going to be an interesting day. FOMC minutes. Thursday, maybe. Friday, not so much. All right. So I would say that Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, but Wednesday is your big day because we have the FOMC minutes, which is 1300, one o'clock central time here for Chicago. Um, so other than that, I'll see you guys in the chat group for Telegram. Peace out. Peace out. Woo!